Well, welcome to the Tammy Hassenpiller podcast. You guys, I'm so honored and privileged and excited about today's podcast. So actually, whether you're joining us via our YouTube channel or on our actual podcast, you're going to hear an inspirational, motivational, heartbreaking, okay, what other adjectives can I yeah. describe this story? Um, and, 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 an person. Empo- and an empowerment story, because the truth is we all go through difficulty, we all go through adversity, and there's times when we want to, we actually want to hide from the world, because... Mm-hmm. I'll say either the picture or maybe even facade that we've put up, that we've had to live um, behind our whole life, when that falls down and people see us so often, we don't know how to get back up. And let me tell you what I mean by that. I want to introduce my friend Tina Conkin to you. And Tina and I have been a part of ministry for probably 10 or 12 years now. And we've done a lot with marriage ministry. You and your husband, Ron, were a a big part of this church starting, Influence Church starting. And the first thing we did is we started marriage conferences with you and your husband. And that's your specialty, coming together, putting marriages, broken marriages back together. But Tina, the point is, you had a broken marriage. Did. And did. a lot of times I like to say that our misery becomes our ministry. Mm. And the very thing that we are broken in is the very thing that God uses in vulnerability and honesty often to be the very ministry and platform for yeah. our message. So yeah. um, I just want to thank you for taking the time to come into our studio today. And thank we you. do want to talk about your new book that's just come out. But for our listening audience, um, talk to us a little bit about the backstory of you and your husband, Ron, and um, we've lost Ron recently to cancer, and you have continued with the ministry over these last six years. But let's begin by talking about why did you guys get into marriage ministry in the first place? Well, we were already in ministry, Tammy. We were already pastoring before the big event that I call it. Um, But in ministry, uh, we were in pastoring, and we found... For us, because we were dealing with a lot of the counseling in the church, that there wasn't anything dramatic, but really dramatic for transformation for people stuck, right? So church was great, and if your family was intact, it was awesome. Mm. But I also grew up in the church where you put on your Sunday face, Mm -hmm. right? And you hide everything else. And so that was the era where we were pastors. And so where people were coming behind closed doors and we'd hear their hurts Mm -hmm. and their struggles, we started to find there really wasn't much that we were offering as a church except for a pat on the back and prayer and let's pray through this, right? And so... We knew that was lacking. We just didn't know where to find the help. And as God would have it, I got into trouble. And first I got into trouble really not in the marriage, though it affected the marriage. It was really in my parenting. I started finding that though I was the children's pastor at my church, I was starting to reject one of my children Mm -hmm. and not able to nurture her and not able to take care of her the way I had for the first eight years of her life. And I looked for help and I looked for help. And you know, I ended up, funny enough, in a Dr. Phil program. Mm -hmm. Can you believe it? Before he was Dr. Phil, Mm -hmm. when he was just doing, and for me, that was a transformation we'd been looking for for years where people really go through that intense looking at their own heart, looking at what's going on inside of them. And I think that in itself transformed not just my parenting, but my marriages. I was able to go through, and as you know, and the book is written, it was an affair. Mm -hmm. And um, the affair was during ministry and where do you turn to where do you go you know and it was it was it was a hard thing to go through Mm -hmm. and keep it secret you know Tina I want to stop right now because um we I want to touch on some things and we're going to move into this the affair your book is actually um how God used the other woman so it was actually Ron that had the affair so that was his struggle and yours was pushing away your daughter not really knowing how to maybe parent her And again, we started this whole broadcast by saying we put on these facades and then we come. And I just want to take a moment because we live in a world right now where people are rejecting the church because 
the church can't help them. Right. That's what they're saying. The church hurt me. The church doesn't have resources, which is why you have a marriage ministry today and you come yes. alongside and you're working with local churches. But I just want to say right now, I mean, the church is filled with hurting people. And yes, I'm a pastor. We've been a pastors of churches for many, many years. And, and we should lead the way. We should know the way we have God's word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. But it doesn't mean that at times we're not all so broken. Yes. And I, I just want to, I, I take every moment I can, every opportunity that I can is to say, give grace, yes. give grace to churches that are trying, yes. trying to find the way. And so, that's so, where you guys were. Yeah. So I want to make sure that the, the people that are listening understand this was 25 years ago, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And the church back then, I grew up. And you grew up as a little girl in the church. I know that part of your story is we were not open to that. You go to church and you're on your best behavior. Mm -hmm. You wear your best suit. That's the church I grew up in. And that is why I am so thankful Mm -hmm. for the church today and the ministry for us that developed out of that. Because I was one of those pastors that had no resources. That's it. You know, I'd see families in trouble and, and I didn't know what to do except say, well, you know, we'll pray with you and we'll stand with you and we'll believe for your mm-hmm, children. Mm-hmm. And But had nothing. And the church has come so far. I consider now, I, I honestly can say, because I travel a lot mm-hmm. and I work a lot with churches, I can honestly say we've got, I would say 80% of our evangelical mm-hmm. churches today have become more of a hospital mm-hmm. in willing to get dirty with the people and we're no longer afraid that's the cool thing that i'm seeing as i travel we are no longer afraid to go and say i'm hurting yeah i'm in trouble yeah you know i need help Mm -hmm. right and then like influence church you guys have resources i mean how many couples have you sent over the years Mm -hmm. you've got places the church can't do it all right But can we be a hospital that can send Mm -hmm. them to specialists? Mm -hmm. And that's where I find the church has grown. And we're not ashamed that we're human anymore. We don't have to put on a superhuman. So when we got in trouble with the affair, like I said, 25 years Mm -hmm. ago, where do you go? Yeah. Especially that you're in ministry. So for some reason, it's funny. I always say we look for ways to protect God, mm. right? Instead of just sh- showing our humanity. Yeah. More of the world had respect for us. As a matter of fact, it started a secular ministry. I started in Canada with mm-hmm. this, and it became more secular than it was Christian. We were getting more secular mm. marriages coming in. Mm. Why? Because we were open Yeah. and we were real. Well, you know, you've, two things just hit me, and I, this is how I think will segue and um just fyi this is just off the cuff this is just two friends talking about something we're passionate about and that is healing relationships but how we started was we have resources now so who's ever listening right now whether you're watching or you're listening there are resources out there to help you you are not alone you are not desperate so the church has become resources and we work with organizations like yours but the other thing and i want to segue this way is I believe because of honesty and vulnerability. Yes. Honesty and vulnerability. We finally, as Christians or the church, are being honest with our issues. Yes. And it doesn't excuse it, but it does give us an open door for healing and taking the right steps in the right direction. Exactly. So you have to be vulnerable. You have to be honest. And that's what you do at all of your boot camps and their classes and resources that you use so you're teaching and coaching now but let's start with the pain that you went through of the affair because yeah. listen we're in southern california where what is the statistic here 72 percent i want to say i know it's in the 70s percent of people will be affected by a divorce yes yes so and now those do? are first time divorces in orange county yeah. where we live wow. so it's huge and it is and, and you know and i want to say this we don't get divorced because we don't love each other anymore. We don't get divorced because of infidelity. We don't get, those are all symptoms mm. that come up. But when Ron and I went through this, one of the scriptures that we discovered was when Jesus said in Matthew nineteen eight, 
He said, Moses allowed divorce because of the hardness of the heart. Mm. And so when I had that moment of how did we get here? We're in ministry. We help people. We counsel people. We help families. How did we get here? How did we end up in this affair? You know, Mm. and that was huge for me personally, because that became my moment of truth. How does somebody get there that their whole being their whole purpose in life is to heal the brokenhearted right heal broken families and help children grow up in healthier homes and then this happens which to me is one of the most devastating things that can happen in a marriage and so we had to look at that and of course when that scripture came out so loud and clear i said so lord infidelity isn't the reason for divorce Mm -hmm me burning the soup isn't reason for divorce. And I say that Mm. because in the times of Moses, a man could divorce his wife for any reason. Mm. There was, you know, we think no fault divorce is California thing. It's a new law. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's not. Mm. It was in Moses's day. That was a no fault divorce. Unfortunately, the women didn't have the same rights, Mm -hmm. but the men could divorce their wives for any reason. And so we looked at that and Jesus's answer to that He wasn't disagreeing with Moses' law, but he was saying, let's go back and see why he had to implement that law. And that law was implemented because of the hardness of the heart. And that was the first step of healing for us, Mm. for me specifically, because God revealed it to me that, and he revealed it to me in a very painful, painful way. Mm -hmm. So, well, let's, let's just get down to some practical because there's not a person listening right now that's not been affected by either the strain of a marriage, the hurt of a marriage, whether it's in their family, whether their parents went through it, someone's affected by it. Let's talk a little bit about after you went through this and you and Ron knew that you wanted to stay married, you wanted to work Mm -hmm. through it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you sought counseling yourself and you went through, you can share that. But the big question I get asked in ministry all the time is how do you rebuild trust? Oh, how do you rebuild trust? Because, you know, a lot of, a lot of people want to forgive and they can even forgive, yeah. but there's that constant question mark in the back of their mind. How do I trust again? Right. How did you go through that? Well, process? Tammy, there's a whole chapter in the book on trust. And um, let me just back that a little bit mm-hmm. first, because that was sort of step two for me. Step one was what I call my mirror moment. And mm. I in the book, there's a chapter called Mirror, Mirror on the Wall. Mm. And it was that moment within less than 24 hours of finding out and it was the morning after I call it the morning after and I went to the bathroom and I remember just before even doing anything I just looked in the mirror my eyes were puffy I'm pretty sure I didn't sleep all night I cried and cried and it was that ugly cry you know and Mm -hmm. I could see in the mirror just the ugliness of it all and it was like in a moment I heard this voice in the mirror. So I'm crying and I'm going, why God? Why me? Why us? You know, and in that moment, I heard this voice and it said, Tina, stop crying and ask yourself the question, what part did you play in this? Mm. And Tammy, I grew up Pentecostal. I don't know if you know that. Mm. (laughs) But all of a sudden, I'm fighting demons, you know, in the mirror, because I'm thinking this can't be God. Like, it sounded like the God voice I knew. I just feel like in my work right now, here's what, don't ask God why, ask yourself why. Yes. And that's what he was saying. That's amazing, because I mean, for me, in difficulty, it's so easy for me to ask God, why'd you let me go through this? And maybe I need to ask... Tammy, why did you, what did you do? Why, why did you what do what you did? What part did you play in this? That's like, so, where's that? so instead that's of even that, more unfair. I know. Come on, God. Right? It's like kicking and a wounded dog. that's why I did not want for one minute to accept that was God. <laughs> wow. Right? This was a, you know, sheep in, in you know, how we say, yeah. be careful yeah. and all that. And yeah. I thought, this is an angel of light. This is not God. You know, God wouldn't do that. Mm. And so I start, you know, fighting this thing and fighting mm. the voice. And, and all of a sudden, when I got all quiet... Mm. I thought, God, is is it you? Mm. And then anger came up again. Now, I'm giving away too much of that chapter, but anger came up again. And I said, you know what, God? I'll tell you what. If it is you, then show me what part I played in it. 
Well, I'll tell you what, when you ask God the honest questions, you know that, mm, right, yeah, Cammie? When I you do. ask God those honest questions, he does not falter to answer mm -hmm. very quickly. When people say God doesn't answer quick, yeah, yeah. you just ask him to search your heart. That's it, that right there. And he will come right there. Yeah. You know, he's just waiting oh, for us so to say, good. God, search my heart. That's what David mm -hmm. said in the mm -hmm. Psalms, you know, like put light on it, you know. And mm -hmm. right away, it was like I had that moment where he transported me mm. to 20 years earlier. Oh, no, 15 years earlier. I got to get my years right. But 15 years earlier, because the affair happened at about 14 years of marriage. So um, about 15 years earlier. And I stood in this place looking down at a coffin. Mm. And I thought, I know where I am, but what does this have anything to Because I had buried someone I loved. And when he literally, you know, if you can imagine Scrooge, the, mm, that, that, right. where he takes him to that. Yeah. And I'm standing over it and I'm looking down. I don't see a body, but I see a red rose. And I thought, that's the rose I placed there. And it was still alive. Mm. And God just said, Tina, that's your heart. Mm. You laid that down and you made a vow that you would never love like that again. Mm. And so as much as I loved Ron and we had a great marriage and we loved ministry together, there was that part of my heart mm. that I had vowed and made it the hardness of the heart, mm -hmm. Matthew 19, 8. Yeah. That's where he came in and showed me there was the hardness of your heart. You decide to shut down a part of your heart that made nurturing. Now let's go back to where I started yeah. with my daughter, mm. okay? Mm. At eight years old, in my mind, you don't need nurturing anymore, so I stopped nurturing. Mm. Baby needs nurturing because they're helpless. Mm. Eight-year-old, no, mm. you, you don't need 10 hugs a day. Mm. Off you go. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you're sick, well, you go to school anyway. Mm. You know, I was that, mm. the nurture part of me in any relationship, mm. right? That's why that Matthew 19, 8, I often will tell couples, individuals, families, it's not just about divorce. Divorce is a separation. Mm. That can happen. So if the hardness of the heart mm -hmm. is the culprit. So does that answer yeah. that first yeah. part yeah. in in the reveal? Mm -hmm. You know, I always talk mm -hmm. about the R3, yeah. the reveal, rewrite, renew. And you take yourself through that. And that's, again, what developed. Mm -hmm. And I have to give your husband some credit for that R3. Yeah. He, his <laughs> three points, Pastor Phil's three points were a little bit different. But I ran with yeah, it. I, became, I yeah. branded it, yeah, sure. you know. And I went, Phil, if I stole it, you can sue me later. No, but I'm absolutely. taking it. Hey, that you way. take it. That's exactly. a great message. And we and were able to share message. that with you. Yes. So. And we did that in single. Singapore mm -hmm. together. So mm -hmm. I base everything on that R3. Of, so it starts with revealing the heart. Okay. Now listen, let's just stop. This is too good. And if you're listening, you're in your car right now, you're listening to this podcast, go back and write these things down. If you're listening on uh, watching on YouTube right now. So there's a reveal that God there reveals is. what's going on in our own heart. Ask yourself the why yeah. before you ask your loved one the why. Yeah. And then you re we rewrite. You have to rewrite your story. You have to rewrite the story. So the reveal is really opening up, being willing to look at, I call them the rocks that harden our heart, right? right? So... Look, we don't have to see all the rocks at once, but in that specific time mm -hmm. where I was going through this challenge of the affair, I needed to know, and, and God needed to reveal to me, because I couldn't answer him. Yeah. When he said, what part did I play? Now, I also want to clarify, because I've been criticized a little bit on what part mm -hmm. does a woman play in somebody's affair, or mm -hmm. a man play in his mm -hmm. wife's affair. I don't believe we played a part in the actual affair, mm -hmm. that everybody's responsible for their own sin. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... I did not play a part in that. What God was asking is, how did you get here? Mm -hmm. What part did you play in getting, getting to, to this, this point. place? Mm -hmm. Because affairs don't just happen. Yeah. Okay. And so um, the hardness of the heart, though, was to me that rose he revealed. Right. I tucked, and he kept, and he, God is so good, you know, he kept that rose alive. Mm -hmm. Here was 15 years mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. There's no body there. The body's gone of right. the person who died. Right. But my heart yeah. was still alive. The and the only you. instructions mm -hmm. he gave me to rewrite mm -hmm. is he said, pick up the rose, put it back in your heart, mm -hmm. and I will heal the marriage. Mm -hmm. 
That was it. That, mm. that was the rewriting yeah. part, and is you know, being willing to pick it that's up. That's so good. And you know, you know? Tina, it, I mean, and what I want to say here is that if you if you ask God, he will show you. Yes. He will reveal yes. what he wants for you. Tina, this is just too good, and we have too much to say. So no. what I'd love to do, I... I want to go into um, an extended session with you. Okay. Because I would love for us to touch on that third R. Okay. So we're going to reveal, rewrite, and then the renew. Right. And we want to talk to you, how do I renew a broken relationship, a severed relationship? And then we're going to move into how do I trust again? And you don't want to miss, this woman is a wealth of knowledge because she's done the work. Mm -hmm. She's allowed the Holy Spirit to heal her. And some of us are where we are because we want to be there. Yeah. We want to be stuck. We yeah. want to be a victim. We want to feel sorry for ourselves. We want the other person to feel pain. We use guilt. We use shame. Those tools will never work in renewing no. a marriage, a relationship, a friendship, a ministry. So um, I want to, first of all, thank you guys uh, for joining us today with the Tammy Hudson Pillar podcast. And you can find us on all the social media streams. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And follow Tammy Hudson Pillar. Check out womenofinfluence.today. We have a lot of events going on. We do a lot of coaching here with our ministry. So check us out on all of those streams. If you want to know more, you can check us out at womenofinfluence.today. I want you to join us for part two with Tina Conkin how to save a severed relationship and we'll be talking more about her book great title by the way how god used the other woman basically to save my marriage save my life uh, save my calling so sometimes god uses the painful things in our life to uh renew rewrite and do the things he's going to do in our life amen Amen. so thank you for joining stay tuned for part two with tina conkin